Let's take a closer look at the aerodynamics of the Porsche 963 and at some angles you usually don't see. To do that we take a closer look at the 963 wind tunnel model which is currently on display at the Porsche Museum in Zuffenhausen. So first of all that is a scale model which means it's not the same size as the race car. And it is painted in non-reflective black so the laser technology to visualize the flow in the wind tunnel is not disturbed. You can see that the bodywork is split into many smaller patches. These body panels are 3D printed and they have a limited build volume. On the other hand, these smaller patches allow engineers to change smaller separate parts in case they want to try new geometries. The SLA 3D printing allows to produce big bodywork panels with good accuracy in short time. But these parts are pretty heavy, so that's nothing for real race cars. A disadvantage of having these many patches is that you create more split lines. And a split line can always trip the flow. Sometimes parts don't match perfectly due to production tolerances and the flow could separate there. So teams fill all these gaps and fixing holes with clay and here it's blue. Because you produce most of the downforce with the low pressure areas of the car, you try to keep them as undisturbed as possible. So you try to avoid split lines and fixing holes on the underside of the wing. Hence the rear wing mounting is from the top and we will see the same thing at the front wing shortly. Another point is that if you position a split line which is filled with clay in an under pressure area of the car, the low pressure can suck the clay out during a wind tunnel run. So the split line is exposed and disturbs the flow again. On the other hand, split lines in high pressure areas of the car can cause the clay to be pushed out and air enters underneath the panels. To avoid that, teams tape their forward facing split lines on the wind tunnel models. But tape can cause new problems if it's not done accurately and create faults which trip the flow again. So if we take a closer look at the front of the 963 we can see a large front wing element. It is thinner and with a smaller leading edge radius at the sides and blends into a larger element with large leading edge radius in the middle. This helps to keep the flow attached under a large variety of pitch angles. If we increase the brightness of this picture, you can see the trailing edge shape of this front wing. They pull the flow higher in the gap between wheel and chassis and use a large gurney flap here to increase downforce. If we look at that area from behind, we can see a very interesting design. This new generation of hypercars is allowed to have one adjustable aerodynamic element. This could be a front wing flap or a rear wing flap. Most teams, including Porsche, decided to use an adjustable rear wing flap. And that means that they are only allowed to use a single element front wing. The interesting thing now is that while the Multimatic chassis sits relatively high, they created a huge blister which forms the underside of the front wing flap. So they can pull the flow higher and hence generate more downforce. Just like with a flap. But there is no flap. And Porsche has a tradition of creating front downforce by bumps and blisters at the front. You can see very nicely how clean the underside of the wind tunnel's front wing is without any split lines or fixing holes. Also very interesting in this shot is the location of the lower wishbone mountings. They sit a lot lower than the chassis itself and are covered with blisters. A little further back we see the floor leading edge which reminds us of the Red Bull RB20 side pod. There is a relatively sharp and forward upper lip which separates the flow which will exit the car at the sides and the flow which will go underneath. Because of the large radius here there will be a strong under pressure area which helps with front downforce again. In the center we see a keel like at an F1 car. It splits the flow in the one above and to the side pods and the flow which enters the floor. So the air which flows towards the side pods either enters the side pod inlet and Porsche uses a rectangular grid to simulate the radiator's pressure drop or it exits the car at the sides. Here we can see an exchangeable carbon board. If you change the shape of this board for this strong airflow you can control outwash, cooling and downforce. Here we can also see what happens if the designer is choosing the wrong fillet size to match another panel. The model makers need to fix it with lots of clay. 
The rear wing elements are machined aluminium parts and they don't use a gurney flap here. Let's go back to the underside where we can see a large white plate. At the back we see how the diffuser starts gently with a carbon fiber plate. From the back we can see how the diffuser has two tunnels and two strakes each. The outside one is collecting flow from far outboard and tries to seal the diffuser from the tire vortices. You can see here how the floor touched the ground a couple of times and the strake is damaged. Above the diffuser trailing edge we see a large gurney across the span to help diffuser performance. And by the shape of this diffuser tunnel we can say that this is a concave diffuser, which puts the lowest pressure further forward for a better aero balance. So all in all it's really interesting to finally be able to have a look underneath the 963. We could see some interesting design solutions and we can now also say from an aerodynamics point of view that, although it's a BOP championship, the 963 is a very nicely designed race car. In my previous videos we saw that also engine and packaging wise the car is neatly designed compared to the competition. So how do you like the 963? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.